eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon Line and Cree Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. America has launched. So rises a new era of American space flight. And with it, the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. Seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Thanks once again for joining us. Today's talk is focused on a trade review for the week, what happened this past week, and what we're looking forward to next week. This for Tesla. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. Just wanted to thank our Patreon supporters. We also want to encourage you to like and subscribe if you enjoy the show. So, uh, the primary part of our show today focuses on the fact that we kind of finished out what was an interesting week for Tesla, rotating between 825, let's say, and 800. And then by the end of the week, we had predicted a pin action above 810 but below 825. So it turns out that this process of the pin was working perfectly, setting up well to uh, make the 825 calls worthless. What then happened within an hour of the close of the day was evidently two analysts came out and upgraded Tesla's stock. So this resulted in a nice updraft of the stock price, which basically blew away the market makers who are trying to execute a well thought out pin. So this is an, kind of an interesting circumstance because uh, I didn't, didn't expect the analysts to do so, especially at the, in that timing, but the impact was noticeable. It's also a bit of a surprise because most of the analysts action has been in a downgrade department for Tesla typically. So it's interesting to see this move made uh, not post-market or early in the day or on Monday, etc. It was very interesting timing that was chosen uh, by those that did the upgrades. So today's show actually needs to be called kind of our SpaceX launch show because there's also sort of launching characteristics that are associated with this show because Tesla is... Uh, you know, the stock is actually being launched in a similar manner to the Space Dragon uh, ship that went up. As you know, uh, uh, yesterday, the 20, uh, or excuse me, the 30th of May 2020, there's a new spacecraft that was sent up successfully by Elon Musk and SpaceX, and the two astronauts successfully made it to space. Well, they are there for one to three months. And then evidently there seemed to be, there's another uh, trip planned for August. And so it seems like we're developing a pattern here of the U.S. moving back into taking over its ship people up to uh, the Space Center activities, which is great. Uh, the, one of the things we noticed was that there seems to have been a push upward for Tesla stock associated with both these analyst uh, upgrades and with the successful launch of Space Dragon slash SpaceX uh, ship to the International Space Center. So we're cautiously optimistic as we enter to this week because Tesla finished up the day and after, after hours at 8.42, up seven and a half dollars from the 8.35 close. And we're kind of keeping our fingers crossed in hopes that we still get a nice push from both the upgrade and the publicity gained during uh, the SpaceX successful launch. And so uh, we wouldn't be surprised to see the stock sort of move into the 850s, possibly 860s, as a result of all this good news and good feeling. Um, our hope, frankly, is that we see Tesla in the 900 realm because once we get to the 900 neighborhood, we start entering a short squeeze zone, which would allow the stock to sort of gain momentum upward as uh, 
as the those that are shorting the stock have to start covering. So um, we're in an interesting zone right now. We're four weeks from the end of the quarter. Um, we're uh, pushing hard to get production out. Uh, I, I did a quick, um, one of the things I have been doing is visiting our local service facility and took a number of photos there yesterday. It was interesting to note that um, this area uh, typically gets vehicles shipped in after they've been uh, shipped from the factory to Alabama and then trucked here. And I got a chance to see possibly three or four vehicles that have just come in uh, f that were produced over the last week or so in Fremont. And it looks as though things are starting to get back to normal in terms of inbound production. So I saw a Model Y that was uh, still had the, the packing uh, uh, elements around it. And I'll go ahead and uh, load that up so you guys can at least take a look at what I saw when we visited the service facility uh, for kind of our eyeball of what was going on. There's still very light on cars, but it seems like <coughs> they're starting to get inventory that can be sold. Um, we also, another thing that we had heard about is Tesla typically has a process of making everything, shipping it to Europe, and then the last few weeks as we head into the end of the quarter, they typically are making vehicles that will stay in the United States, and so we uh, we're kind of expecting that. We don't know the total answer to this circumstance yet, but uh, we'll update you and, and uh, include some photos so you can get a look at that as well. So the final piece of our sort of anticipatory trade for the week is just the fact that we're now in the zone where analysts really control because there's not a lot of official company news that can really power the stock. So this, these upgrades, I think, are terrific. I think that uh, it's nice to have folks like that do upgrades because they have a lot of resources with which to visit uh, production facilities both in China as well as the United States to understand what's going on. Uh, the upgrade is also significant because, you know, as you know, there were some down numbers for last month because there were people that sort of held their purchase until the beginning of May uh, officially so that they could get the discounts that Tesla and the government were providing at that point. So, uh, you know, I, I just think that we've got a lot of good news going on for Tesla. Now that we've gone through the Einhorn, uh, Elon Musk discussion of the, tes the stock of Tesla's is too high, there's this phenomenon for me for sure where there's like, don't get comfortable with what you're seeing because yes, the news might be good and things are going well, but you know, how far away are you from sort of dirty tactics by the hedge funds to lower the price or how far are we away from other methods that might significantly run the stock down in the short term while the long holders of the stock and the options sit there making money because things are moving along nicely and you kind of get killed as you're trying to tra trade the short uh, one or two week calls uh, that might be available. So. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, for now, I'm claiming the fact that Tesla is going to experience uh, a Starship uh, generated 50 point rise in its stock price. We all make a little money. It's a happy day. The hedge funds get mad because now they have to figure out if they are going to have to push the stock price up further because uh, they're going to get squeezed out if they uh, don't close out now further giving us a nice push in the stock price. Um, I further wanted to add to this that I don't think, well, I think the more likely scenario is that this good news, if you will, operates on the three-day rule where in theory we sort of get a mellowing out of the stock price. And if uh, the large firms can confirm these numbers, Wednesday is of next week is when we might see institutions responding to these upgrades. Uh, the other side of this argument, though, is that a lot of firms that produce research, particularly the big ones, only produce that research um, at the behest or payment of their large institutions. So it's entirely possible that the move that we just saw is related to the fact that there's an entity that paid for the research. Once they got the research back, they started buying, and that's why we saw the stock price push up as it did on Friday after uh, that research was finally put on the street. 
So it's my belief you have a larger number of people who are saying, okay, let's look at what these guys said. And the other analysts are looking through it saying, can we justify their argument to our customers? And if so, then we could see a nice push up in the stock price as a result. Uh, so let's keep our fingers crossed. I think that, you know, from what I'm seeing everything right now, unless Mr. Trump says something uh, that changes things, um, it pushes Tesla stock price up into the 850s, maybe even the 870s and 880s. And once we're into that zone, we potentially have a short squeeze, push it up another 50 to 100 points, and everybody makes a few dollars in the process. So we're hoping this would be the case. The one other thing that's going on, as you know, we have some investors, uh, a pool of folks that are doing uh, SpaceX shares investing. And uh, it was really nice to see this go off well, uh, looking at, you know, value increases as, you know, manned f- space flight seems to be going pretty well uh, in that, you know, the first round worked out pretty well. There aren't a lot of competitors uh, for Elon and company right now, even though Blue Origin and others are working hard to be those competitors. Uh, you know, I was intrigued because after the flight, uh, was done. Mr. Trump made a point of of saying that it's amazing what we can accomplish, and it's amazing because if it blows up, nobody wants to be your friend. If it's successful, you have a whole bunch of new friends, and one might not be surprised to see uh, SpaceX pick up more business in the process. Uh, it's clear that there's some good publicity that went to Elon in the process, and you know that publicity might be worth five or ten points in the movement of Tesla stock because there are some overlapping activities between the two firms, in particular the Cybertruck exterior sort of being sort of technology ideas being brought over from SpaceX into the Tesla world. Um, I I guess I'm a little bit surprised that this was uh, materially impactful given that, um, you know, SpaceX buys $100,000, $200,000 in uh, vehicles a quarter from Tesla. Uh, for employees to get around, etc. And while there's no direct huge dollar impact straight away uh, in terms of revenue for for Tesla, it seems that the PR value uh, adds some sh- share value there, and people being confident in what's going on at Tesla and their ability to to deliver under tough situations like we've had with COVID. So, um, so in general. Congratulations to Elon and SpaceX for the launch, successful. Uh, I wanted to say uh, congrats on those analysts. They had the courage to do a raise on Tesla. <clears throat> We're now getting more analysts who are comfortable with Tesla in the 850 to 900 realm, if not more on the stock price. And frankly, the more analysts you have that are embracing those numbers, the more institutions that will start embracing it as well. So. Uh, We look forward to updating you on uh, any and all new developments in this regard. Uh, This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, German, au revoir, friends, le hitro, Hebrew, hoda, hafez, farsi, nuff, respect, walk, wood, is what we say in Jamaica. I want to also encourage you uh, to consider Patreon because you do get trade blasts on a daily basis. That might be helpful if you're actively trading the stock uh, or options related to Tesla. Also wanted to note, we're starting to do some updates because I've started trading Shopify a lot because we really weren't getting the volume of activity necessary to make money on Tesla shares. So M-E-L-I, Mercado Libre, and Shopify is another company that I've begun covering because I'm trading them. So I thought it might be useful for folks to look at some other things that might have movement that are worth trading any rate, uh, once again, thank you for joining us and have a great day. Uh, look forward to your comments and questions. Bye for now.